Good evening, church. Welcome to the evening service, First Prez. Would you take out your bulletin, page 11? Let's uh, look at the shorter catechism for tonight. <clears throat> While you're looking there, I remind you, this is something that the, the church has done historically through the ages. They have a catechism question in the evening. Uh, so it's not something we made up, but it's a way that the church has taught its people through the ages. So tonight, the question is number 33, and in our Reformed circles, this is the question of all questions. This is the essence of the gospel. Let me ask you the question, and you answer heartily. What is justification? Justification is the set of God's free grace by which He pardons all our sins and accepts us as righteous in His sight. He does so only because He counts the righteousness of Christ as ours. Justification is received by faith alone. Would you hear the Word of God as we're called to worship this evening? I'm looking at Luke chapter 4. I'd like you to turn there, and while you're turning there, I'm going to introduce our speaker. We are very honored this evening to welcome Dr. Tony Parks to our pulpit. He's a colleague at Erskine uh, Theological Seminary. He's taught some of our uh, students here. He's senior pastor of Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina, where he's pastored since 1991. His wife Brenda is with him this evening. Would you just raise your hand, Miss Brenda? And, uh, and his son Donovan. Uh, we're honored to have them as well. The son Hamilton is also a teacher in Greenville. <clears throat> he hails from Birmingham, Alabama. He's a graduate of Erskine College and Seminary, and uh, he has his doctorate from Westminster Seminary in Philadelphia. God's used him mightily to lead in uh, the church, and particularly in uh, Greenville. He's a chaplain the Greenville City Police Department. He's the co-founder of Family Outreach Community Services in Greenville. He's the co-host of Vital Link, which is a morning radio show in Greenville. And he's worked against organized crime, and he's been one who has, uh, has championed uh, the, the ministry of fathers in families with the South Carolina Fatherhood Coalition. These and other acts of leadership uh, demonstrate what is uh, on his website about his church, that uh, he and that church are Bible-based and Christ-centered and Spirit-led. And we are very honored that you would be here this evening to preach for us in this month of sabbatical, where they are getting a sabbatical from my preaching, Dr. Parks. And we're focusing on uh, reconciliation and diversity in the kingdom of God. And for that, I'd like you to turn your attention to Luke chapter 4, verse 14. We referred to this passage this morning. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about Him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised Him. He went to Nazareth, where He had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, He went into the synagogue, as was His custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Would you rise together and lift your hands? Let's pray together that God would send his spirit among us. <clears throat> oh Lord, we have just remembered in the prelude that the blood of Jesus Christ, which has washed away our sins, will never lose its power. We pray this evening that you would pour out on us that spirit of justification, the one who seals to us the accomplished work of Jesus Christ. Pour it out on us unmistakably. Pour it out on our preacher. 
May the word descend upon us with full power and conviction that you would get a name for yourself, not just this evening, but in us this week. We pray it in the strong name of Christ and for his sake and God's people said together, amen. Our King, Creator, Lord, Savior of all who trust Thy Word, to Thee who seek Thee ever near, now to our praises bend Thine ear, now to our praises bend Thine ear. Thy dear cross a grace is found It flows from every streaming wound Whose power our inbred sin controls Breaks the firm bond and frees our souls Breaks the firm bond and frees our souls Hang upon the tree The quaking earth acknowledge thee And when you gave up your last breath The world grew dark as shades of death The world grew dark as shades of death Father's glory high We conquer never more to die Us by thy mighty power defend And reign through ages without end And reign through ages without end
I'm a sinner weak And scarce know how to pray or speak From fear and weakness set me free Oh God, be merciful to me Hear gracious God, a sinner's cry For I have nowhere else to fly My hope, my only hope's in Thee Oh God, be merciful to me To Thee I come a sinner gray And well Thou knowest all my sin Forgiveness is with me. Oh God, be merciful to me. Hear, gracious God, a sinner's cry. For I have nowhere else to fly. My hope, my only hope's in Thee. Oh God, be merciful. saints I'll then agree God has been merciful to me God has been merciful to me hear gracious God a sinner's cry for I have nowhere else to fly my hope my only hope's in be merciful to me. My hope, my only hope's in Thee. Oh God, be merciful to me. Amen. You may be seated. I ask the ushers, uh, please, to come forward. We're praying this evening for uh, these members of of the um, downtown parish and other concerns before us remind you of the announcements in their bulletin and please uh, pass the friendship pad down your pew. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have been merciful to us in Jesus Christ. You've made us as righteous as we will ever be. And uh, you have qualified us. Should we die this very night, as many here as have asked Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior, we would go immediately to be with you in glory, and we would be perfectly conformed to the image of Christ. Thank you for the blessed hope of the resurrection and the gospel. We pray for these in the downtown parish to be encouraged with this gospel tonight. We pray it for Leah and Joe Dorenzo, for Peggy and Bill Dixon. For Michelle Dye, for Sarah and John Eckley and their new little one, Sanders. We pray for Ann Edeburn, for Joe Elliott, for Debbie Fredenberg, for Colin Fuller, Hannah Green. We also remember again this evening uh, those who are ministering with the Kettermans in, in South Africa, and especially for them while they are here on their furlough. Please give them traveling mercies back. We also remember Alex McCauley grieving the loss of his mother. Would you comfort him with the knowledge of the resurrection? Thank you for another great Christian woman who finished well. We pray that you would take these gifts and multiply them for the sake of your kingdom. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. God's people said, amen. i 
strength help us go in this world wherever we roam ancient words will guide us home ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come words in heart. The words of our faith handed down to the saints came to us through sacrifice. Oh, heed the faithful words of Christ. Ain't Changing me and changing you, we have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. sing with us. The blood will never lose.
Good evening. Good evening. Let us bow our heads. Our Father and our God, we're grateful for this occasion and for this opportunity to stand before you today to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray your blessings upon these, your people. We ask for your anointing and your blessings upon me, your servant, that what we say and what we do will be pleasing in your sight. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm honored to be here. I want to thank your pastor, uh, Dr. Robinson, for allowing me to be here, for my friend, Mike Phillips, who turned and twist my arm to get me here uh, in his kind way, uh, just to buy a phone call and a text. And uh, we met not too long ago here in Augusta down at Beulah Grove and uh, had an opportunity to fellowship and it was a wonderful, wonderful occasion. I have had the opportunity just sitting here, I came in earlier to, uh, to get some of the uh, music worship and was uh, uh, just flabbergasted over the opportunity to take part in their practicing. It was truly worship and uh, thank you for the opportunity that I had. Also, I feel like I'm part of the family already. I, I met Sam, and, um, uh, and uh, he made me feel welcome. And uh, I suppose most of you all know who he is, Samuel. And did I say it right? Sam, okay, I know who he is. And, <laughs> and uh, I met Granny. And uh, does everybody know who Granny is? Okay. And uh, I've just been made to feel real at home being here. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful occasion. I have my lovely wife and my son, Brenda and Donovan, one of my sons, are with me. And uh, they have been introduced. And it's, uh, it's an honor to have them uh, here with you. I bring you greetings from the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church, as it has been stated, where um, the Lord has allowed me to pastor them for the past 23 years. Um, as we pay our attention to the Word of God, I ask that you would turn in your Bibles with me to a passage of Scripture, the Exodus third chapter, which uh, I sent uh, as part of the outline. I will attempt to stay as close to it as, as I can. This passage of Scripture is uh, somewhat of a a motif that is used uh, amongst African Americans uh, uh, during the period in time of um, uh, being delivered uh, from the, uh, the, the, the areas of life in which they had uh, gone through, and I thought that it was more fit, uh, it was very fitting for uh, this particular occasion to try to apply it to the setting uh, uh, as well here tonight. Uh, in the third chapter, it reads, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Herod, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared 
to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. And the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the homes of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites had reached to me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are opposing them. So now, go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Amen. As I talk to you tonight on the subject matter of answering the call of God, answering the call of God, God is patiently waiting for you and I to answer the call to ministry. I'm convinced that God has equipped each person here tonight with various gifts and talents necessary to meet the needs of this church. The church has various ministries and organizations and individuals waiting for you to respond to the call of God, waiting for you all over the congregation to answer the call that God has made in your life. We know that this worship facility is filled with wisdom, knowledge, and expertise of those of you who are employed by various secular companies and organizations throughout this great state. You have been called, you are employed, and you have been hired to make a productive contribution to the well-being of the organization which you are employed. God has spiritually equipped you as members of the body of Christ for the work of service, for the work of ministry. And every member of the body of Christ has been equipped and called by God to make a spiritual contribution to the church. Because God has equipped and called you, you are expected you are expected to answer God's call. The church today is suffering because many of us refuse to answer the call of God. Ministries in the church are suffering. Individuals in the communities are suffering. And all because of our refusal to answer the call of God. Very much very much like Moses, as I look at this text and 
This text means so much to me. I find myself answering the call to God. My standing here tonight is uh, an example of my answering the call to God. Experiencing a very eventful childhood throughout my life, I find myself answering the call of God. A childhood where I lost my mother, a single parent, while still in elementary school having to face the trials and the tragedies of life, I later on found myself answering the call to God. God got my attention at a very early age, and I met God realizing that he promised that he would never leave me, he would never forsake me, that all I had to do was is answer the call of God and stay in the path of God. I had to listen to God. Many of us today refuse to listen to God as he calls us. Listen to God as he speaks to us. Listen to God as we hear sermons Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. We refuse to answer the call of God. But when you find yourself in a circumstance, you find yourself in a situation such as that Moses found himself in, there comes a time when the only person you can listen to is God. I heard him through his word, and I decided after listening to God, I decided to answer the call into the ministry. How many sermons have you heard? How many Sunday school lessons have you? How many devotionals have you read and failed yet to hear the call of God? God demonstrates a deep concern and passion about the suffering of his people. God was concerned about me. God was concerned about my condition. God was concerned about my situation. And God spoke to me. God sent the Spirit of God and his son Jesus to come and see about me. And as a result of my knowing who Jesus is and and what he did for me at Calvary, I decided to listen to God. And because of that, he recognizes your sorrow. He recognizes your pain. He recognizes your affliction. And, and, and God is listening right now to the needs of the prayers that were read out. He's listening to the needs of those of you that have silent needs that you haven't spoken to anyone yet. God is listening. God is listening to what's going on in your spirit. And as a result of his, his listening to you, He's concerned about every one of us. God is listening to our needs. He has listened to the cries that have cried out to him early this morning when we fell out of our bed on our knees and and cried out to him. He heard you. He's listening to you. And because of his sovereign in nature, he knows our needs and is so concerned that he comes to our rescue. He comes in the form of Jesus Christ. He comes in the name of the Holy Spirit, and he takes care of our every need. God, my brothers and sisters, in 2015 is still in the rescue business, and he'll come and he'll see about you. But there comes a time in our lives when when we have to depend on God, and, and God gets our attention. He gets our attention, and God speaks to us in a way that no one is able to reach us except God. Your mother may tell you what to do, and your father and grandparents, and all your life you've been listening to people. But when God speaks, God has a way of getting your attention. In this this text, God gets Moses, he gets him alone as he leads him to the flock on the, side of, on the side of the wilderness where he can get him by himself. This is where Moses meet God, and he meets him all by himself. I come to tell you that there are going to be situations, there are going to be times, there things are going to happen in your life when God gets you alone. And when God gets you alone, and it's only you and God. And he's the only one that can help you in your circumstance. He's the only one that can help you in your situation. And he's the only one that's able to fix the problem that you're dealing with. 
there comes a time when you have to answer God. Not only do you have to answer God, but you have to listen to him. He came to the mount of God. I don't know where God is going to carry you. I don't know what position God is going to put you in. I don't know where you're going to have to listen to God and where God is going to get your attention. But whenever I come to tell you that whenever God's call, God calls, he speaks directly to you. Your friend won't be there with you when God speaks to you. Your parents won't be able to, to intervene when God speaks to you. You have to answer God all by yourself. And you have to answer him according to the circumstance and situation that you're in. God gets Moses' undivided attention. There may be somebody in here tonight where God has gotten your undivided. Finally, God said, I got you right where I want you. And you have to pay attention to him. It's not until something happens and God gets our attention that we decide, now, God, I'm going to listen to you. It's like a New Year's resolution. So finally, I've decided that I'm going to listen to you, God. All, all of these years, I've been, I've been ignoring you. And, and, and finally, I've come to realize that, that, that if I don't listen to you, this may be my last year. Many of us have experienced and are experiencing various trials. Many of us are experiencing tribulations in our lives, all because we have failed to listen to God. Now, I don't think there's a person here tonight that can't say that they have done exactly what God have called them to do. Moses saw the bush on fire, but notice that it not, did not burn. We're inquisitive people, and when stuff happens that we don't understand, we have a tendency to want an answer to it. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him. God he will direct your path. And motive, Moses, he needed an explanation. And whenever something happens that we can't find an explanation to, we have a tendency at that point to eventually and finally we turn to God. And when we turn to God, God uses his power to get, get our attention. He, he uses miracles and he uses people and circumstances in our lives just to get our attention. So I invite you to think of the times that God has spoken to you through another person, through a miracle or through a situation that could not be explained by anyone else except God. God makes himself known. He makes himself known. He, he lets you know who it is. That's talk. This is just not another one of your buddies. This is just not another one of your friends. This is not a horoscope you read in the paper. This is not something that, that you, you, you went to someone, your best friend, and asked them for some advice. But this is God speaking. God speaking. God showed his concern for humanity through his compassion. It's obvious that he loves us. He sent his son because he loved us. And when the Lord saw that Moses had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush. He called him, and he called him by his name, Moses, Moses. And Moses responded to God, and he said, here am I. I can imagine right now that if a voice would come from heaven or from a direction or place that you have never heard and the sound, I can guarantee you it won't be puny. I can guarantee you when God calls, you will know that it's God talking. I can guarantee you God will get your attention. And when God gets your attention, you will listen to him. Many of us have refused to listen to God. But then Moses recognized that while looking at this bush, while realizing that this bush really should be consumed, but it's not, and while I'm looking at it, I hear my name being called. That's something special about this voice. There's something special going on here. Maybe I need to answer. So Moses says, 
here am I. When was the last time you responded to God in a positive manner? God is talking to you. It's not until you take the time to seek God that you will come to know him for who he really is. Moses takes the time to seek God. He looks at the bush. He wonders about the bush. He becomes inquisitive about it as to what's going on with this. God's call is personal. Personally, he called me to do what it is that I've been called to do, to do what I'm doing. I don't have to ask permission to preach God's word. I don't have to ask or get permission what to preach. When he called me, he gave me everything that I needed. And all I have to do is be obedient to him because I've answered the call of God. There's nothing about you that God doesn't know. I guarantee you he could call your name. He knows every hair on your head. He knows everything about you. God is constantly calling and seeking his people to a closer relationship with him. We must obey God. And we're called to go and do exactly as God tells us to do. Not only must we do what God tells us to do, but we must understand that God is a holy God. His call is holy. And we are called away from our sinful past. And we are called to separate ourselves for the purpose of being used by God. Regardless of what you were doing or you have done or the past, God can call you right where you are. God can use you in your present situation. God declares exactly who he is. There's no question about who God is. God says that I, I'm God. Not only did he say I'm God, but he familiarizes himself with Moses by letting him know that I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. And I'm the God of Jacob. Oh, I know he had to be God. Anybody that would claim to be the God of Jacob, he had to be a mighty God. He had to be a good God. If he can look past Jacob, he can look past my faults and, and really see my needs. That's the kind of God he is. So don't ever say that God can't use somebody when he owns to the fact that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God declares exactly who he is. I'm your father's God. God is a God of promise. And not only is he a God of promise, but he's a God of covenant. When he makes a covenant with you, he will not break it. When he tells you he's going to do something, you can expect him to do it. And what God has done for your mother, what God has done for your grandmama, what God has done for those in the past, God will do the same thing for you. Then, what God does when he calls our name, he calls us to service. He gives us instructions that we must obey. God calls because there's a need for each and every one of you to serve. There are many members, but there's only one body. All of us are equipped with gifts. There's not a person living today that does not have a gift and because he called us to service, he's, he's calling because he needs our service. The church is suffering. The community is suffering. People are suffering because the Egyptians are treating them the way that they are treated. I've heard their cry. I've watched what's going on. And because of that, I need you to go out into the community. I need you to go abroad. I, I need your finances. I, I need all of your resources so that I can reach out to the people that are in need of your services. He expects an answer when he calls, and he expects us to respond in a positive way. It's easy to tell somebody else what you won't do. But it's dangerous to tell God what you're not going to do. God tells Moses, Moses, I'm the one that's sending you. 
That's when you have to really understand what God is talking about. You understand that this is a serious call when God's not only he calls your name, not only he gets your attention, but he says, I am the one that's sending. That ought to make you shake in your boots when God tells you that I'm the one that is sending you. So I'm sending you to Pharaoh, and not only am I sending you where I'm sending you, but I'm sending you to tell him to let my people go. I'm convinced that when I see the things that God has asked me to do in my ministry, I realize that God has to have a great sense of humor because I will not bother or dare do some of the things that I've gone out on faith and I've trusted God and I believed to God because of his word and God caused it to come to fruition. Not because of anything that I did, but because of God's word. God tells him, God knew that Moses, Moses was the right man for the job. In spite of Moses' weaknesses, in spite of his fears, and in spite of his past failures, God knew that Moses was equipped to do the job. Many of us are sitting here today, and just like Moses, well, 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 well Pastor, I, I can't speak well. I, I can't stand up in public. I, I, I can't do it the way that you can do it. I, 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 I don't have the resources. I, have, I don't have the training that you have. Uh, when I look back at my life and I shared with you a little bit about my, myself, born in Birmingham, Alabama, and, and, and grew up in the hoods of Birmingham, where I lost my mother at an early age. And when God called me, I didn't tell him I don't have a mother. When God called me, I don't tell him that I grew up in the hoods of Birmingham. Uh, I don't tell him that I'm an African-American male. I don't tell him. I just do what God calls me to do because God said, I'm the one that's sending you. And when God sends you, he doesn't care about your past. He doesn't care about your circumstance. He doesn't care about your situation because God is the one that is sending you. God knew that he was the right man. And every one of you sitting out there, God has a purpose for you. God has a call for you in your life. And God had anointed and appointed and prepared Moses just for this specific mission. And God knows better than we know ourselves. He knows us better than we know who we are. He knows what we can and what we can't do. If God leads you to do something, he will always prepare you to accomplish it. God is calling us because he's concerned about the suffering of his people. God is calling us because he had seen the affliction and the misery of his people. God is calling us because he's heard the cry of the people calling out to him. God sees the oppression that is going on in the world today. He, he sees the affliction of people all over the country. He sees the suffering that's going on. He, he sees the pain that is going on right in this congregation, right in our community. He sees injustices all over the world. And he sees the misery that people are living in. Just because it may not be around you doesn't mean that it's not happening somewhere else. So God says, I'm coming to the rescue, Moses, and I'm using you. And God promised that he would always be with us. Moses didn't have to worry about going alone. He didn't have to worry about doing it alone. All my life, I've never worried about being alone, being alone because he said that I'll always be with you. I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. So he tells Moses, he says, now, so now, go. And I call you today, and I challenge you today, so now, let's go. Now, let's hear the word of God. Now, let's answer the word of God. I'm sending you. I'm sending you to Judea, to Jerusalem, to, to Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. I'm sending you to your communities. I'm sending you around Augusta. I'm sending you all over the place. I'm the one that's sending you to go out there and to tell the pharaohs of the world today, whoever they may be, to let my people go. God is calling you. So why don't you answer the call of God? 
God seeks out your attention, and, and in spite of all that you have been through, he has spared you for this particular purpose that he's calling you. And when you answer the call of God, wherever you go, tell them, I'm here because the Lord has sent me. Tell them that God said that I have sent you. I'm sending you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I heard Abraham say, when he said, here I am, Lord, send me. I heard Samuel say, here I am, God, send me. Jeremiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. And Paul said, here I am, Lord, send me. Can you hear the Lord calling you? Can you hear the Lord calling your name? Can you hear him giving you instructions? Can you hear him telling you what it is that you must do? I invite you today to answer the call of God and say with me, as Moses said, here I am, Lord, send me. Father, we're grateful tonight that you've called to each and every one of us, that you've given us the gift and the call of the ministry, ministries that belong to each and every one of us. There are many members in the body of Christ, but there's only one body. And you've given us these members to make up the body so that the body would not be without. Father, we're grateful for the church. We're grateful for the ministry. We're grateful for the anointing and the power that exists in this congregation. Bless this ministry. Bless this man of God. Bless the leaders of this church. And bless God, the call that has been placed on the life of each person here tonight. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. We ask these blessings of your Father in his name and all of the people that know him as their Savior said amen. amen. And worship together. Holy, holy. Um. Dark 
Now let us look unto the Lord that is able to keep us from falling. Now may the love of God, the peace of God, and the grace of God be with us until we all meet again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let everybody that know him say, Amen.